Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Rosalind Russell, Brian Ahern, and Janet Blair in My Sister Eileen with Akeem Tamirov. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Deep in the heart of New York City is a strange foreign country called Greenwich Village. The inhabitants are painters and longshoremen, sculptors, school teachers, and stockbrokers. It's a place where the normal seems eccentric, and any dark night a shadowy character may tap you on the shoulder and try to sell you a poem or a painting. The strange adventures of two girls from the Middle West who settled down in this never-never land kept Broadway audiences laughing for about two years. The play was called My Sister Eileen. Columbia Studio made the picture, and it's still making Eileen famous in theaters throughout the world. Uh, Rosalind Russell, Brian Ahern, and Janet Blair all gave delightful performances on the screen. And the three of them lend the authentic touch to our production tonight, with Akeem Tamirov heading our supporting cast. Until the opening performance of any play, no one can predict a hit in the theater. That's because art is, unfortunately, not so predictable as science. But things happen rather differently with a product like Lux Flick. That's designed with precision beforehand to do the things that are sure to make a hit. I wish the same scientist could work out a way to tell me how the public will receive a picture. Maybe it can't be done in show business, but they've certainly taken the guesswork out of housework. You're not guessing when you use Lux Flake. Now tonight's gay comedy, My Sister Eileen, starring Rosalind Russell as Ruth, Brian Ahern as Bob Baker, and Janet Blair as Eileen, with Akeem Tamirov as Mr. Apopolis. Our scene, a street in New York City's Greenwich Village. The time, July. The temperature, 93 degrees. Through the waves of heat rising from the sidewalk come two charming but bedraggled young ladies. These are the sisters Sherwood, Ruth and Eileen Sherwood, who hail from Columbus, Ohio, and wish they'd never left there. Their first day in New York has been spent in room hunting. The hunting has been horrible. Right now, their feet are killing them. Oh, Ruth, I can't walk another step on it. Well, this apartment's the last one on the list. You might as well look at it. Ruth, why don't we stop at a hotel tonight and get a nice fresh start in the morning? Eileen, maybe I should have told you earlier. You know this $100? Mm -hmm. That's the last money we ever take from Dad. The last? The last. Oh, but supposing we don't get jobs? Then we starve. We beg, we borrow a seal, darling. Is that a promise? Yes, Ruth. All right. Good now, the first evening. thing I... Good evening, my dear young ladies. Am I wrong in presuming that you are looking for a haven in this, uh... Troubled world? No, we're just looking for a room. Seek no more. You have reached your call. We have? Absolutely. <laughs> All right, this way, dear young ladies. How high up is it? It is not up. It is down. Hey, you mean in the cellar? Follow me, dear young ladies, follow me. I will show you the best value for your money in Greenwich Village. Uh, yes, but in the cellar, I don't think the we want to... The cellar? Listen. What do you mean, the cellar? <laughs> the basement. Now, here we are, right over here. Look, I don't think we're interested in anything. Now, else. now prepare yourself. Well, huh? <laughs> isn't it beautiful? Now, tell me, isn't it just what you always dreamed about? If I did, I'd never go to sleep. Now, please. <laughs> Not the exquisite uh, imitation fireplace and uh, and this big, comfortable day bed. Now, try the bed. Now, now, now just try it. That. Ah, you see? Yeah, I see. Come on, Eileen. Now, look, look. Just look at that interesting and exciting dormer window. I like to look out of the window, not up at ah, it. Ah, don't be prejudiced. Now, life passes up and down in front of you like a regular parade. Now, what more could a young person with a typewriter want? Am I wrong in presuming that you are an author? She's going to be. Well, I knew it. Of course, I could tell it. And you got anything higher up? Higher up? Higher up, my dear young lady. Why don't you let me show you the place before you raise a lot of objections? Yes, Ruth, let Mr. Apop... Apopolis. Apop... Yes, let him show us the place. Now, you have a head on your shoulders, young lady. Now let me point out a few features of this, uh, this beautiful suite. A, it is a summer. 
see, it is at least 30 degrees cooler down here than anywhere higher up. And see, it is only $45 a month. $45? Oh, well, thank you very much, Mr. Apopoulos. We'll let you know. Come on, Eileen. Come oh, on. Ruth, couldn't we stay here for a few days? And then if we like it, we can... Sure. And uh, uh, I'll do better than that. You see, you can have the place for a month on trial at absolutely no cost to you. Then, if you are not 100% satisfied, I will give you back your first month rent. Hmm? The whole month? The whole month. Oh. And July is 31 days. Well, I... It's I really yours. Don't... It's yours. Now, I'm going to show you where everything is. Now, in here. In here, ladies, we had a model kitchenette. Complete in every detail. Where's the icebox? Uh, under the stove. Where else? Well, usually they do uh, put And them here? Down. Here we have a luxurious bathroom. Not the basin with hot and cold taps. It's awfully small. Small? Well, in this room, you won't entertain. <laughs> and uh, you, young lady, are you artistic and uh, fussy like your sister? Well, I'm going to try to get a job on the stage. Oh, an actress. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, yeah, you certainly have the stage and uh, built for it. Oh, thank you. Now, I'll tell you what I'll do. If you take this luxurious room, I will leave that painting, you see? Exactly where it is. Oh, it's charming. Yeah. Who did it? <laughs> yeah, and what is it? I did it. Oh, sure. You know, painting is one of my interests. Yeah. I also write epic poetry and epic drama. Well, ladies, what do you say? Hmm? Uh, the, 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 the painting says... Oh, let's take the place, Ruth. I can't see what we can lose. Mr. Poplar said he would give us our money back, but I... Now, I not... don't know. Legally, you have me where you want me. I gave my word in front of two witnesses. Three, including me. Uh, yes, but oh, you Oh, please, Ruth. Oh, well, all right. Here's the rent. Mm -hmm. 20, 40, 41, 42, 42. 43, mm -hmm. 44. Uh, 45. Ah! Uh, oh! Oh! What was that? Oh! What was what? That noise. The whole room shook. Oh, this. Oh. <laughs> you see, that just shows you how you'll get used to it. I didn't even notice yes, it. Get used to it? You mean it happens all the time? Sure, but you won't even be conscious of it. Oh, little blasting. The new subway. Oh, you mean they're blasting right underneath it? <laughs> what are you worrying about? Those engineers know how much dynamite to use. But, but does it go on all the time? No, 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 of course not. You see, they knock off at midnight. And they don't start again until six in the morning. Six oh, in the morning? Oh, Ruth, we can't stay here. You give us our money back. Uh, what are you getting so hysterical about? I said I will give you your money back, and I will. I will at the end of the month if you are not satisfied. Now, nah, good night, good night, ladies. Sleep tight. Oh, Ruth, what are we going to do? We're going to do 30 days. Ruth, which bed do you want? Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm so tired I could sleep on the floor. We ought to have this phone connected oh. in the morning so we can start calling up for jobs. You don't call up for jobs, dear. You go out and look for them. Oh, Ruth, I wonder what the boys back home will think when I'm an actress in New York. Well, there's one advantage in not leaving any men behind. I don't have to worry what they think. Oh, I know, dear. It's different with you. Boys never meant anything in your life. Not after they got a load of you, they didn't. Well, good night, dear. Good night. Hey, didn't I just put out the light? I think so. Then what makes it so bright in here? Oh, there's a lamppost right in front of the window. Oh, fine. Well, pull the shade down, Ruth. There isn't any shade. No shade? Oh, well, we're practically sleeping out in the street. Just wait till I get that apopolis. Mm. Nice, comfortable bed. It's like sleeping in an iron lung. Would it help any to close the window, Ruth? Close the window, we'll suffocate. Oh, gosh, I'm afraid. You know, a dog could chase a cat through there. Yeah, and probably will. Oh, well. Let's get some sleep. Maybe we can forget. I'm not going back there. That fellow is so all right. back, huh? Why not? In the first place, you'll cook another cup of coffee. Oh, oh, there's two men out there. They're standing right at the window. For the love of God. Why do they have to pick out this spot? <laughs> you get away from there, you drunken loafers. Hey, what's that? You get away from there. You get away from there and we'll call the police. Another thing. It keeps two bays. One for you, but that one's mine. Okay, Mike's not so bad. You get away from there. Hello, Kitty Pie. Get away, get away, get away. I'm fit as a fiddle and raise the law. Oh, <laughs> oh Ruth, close the window. Please close the window. No. I just say not. Don't you do it, Ruthie. I'd rather see her close it. Oh, Ruth, <laughs> please. Come on, cutie. Come to Papa. You get away from there, oh, do you? Come on, here. Come on. Break it up. Break it up. Oh, oh good evening, officer. 
Bring it up, I said. We're just making a social call, officer. That's all. We were just going. Good night. Come on, beat it. Good night, officer. Oh, officer. I'm awfully glad you came. Yeah. Say, you're new in this neighborhood, ain't you? Yeah. We just moved in today. Well, if you're smart, you'll move out tomorrow. I like things nice and quiet on my beach. I'm warning you. Yeah, but, uh... Remember what I told you, that's all. Eileen, you know what he said? Yes, I did. Oh, Ruth, I'm afraid. Oh, no, honey, don't. You'll be all right, darling. You'll feel better in the morning, dear. Just get some sleep and everything will look fine. Good night, dear. Good night, Ruth. Manhattan Magazine, good morning. Manhattan Magazine, just one moment, please. Yes, what do you wish to? I'd like to see some of the editors. Sorry, no appointments at office. Manhattan just leave your manuscript, please, or mail it in. Okay. I've been mailing them in all my life. Here, thank you. We'll let you know. I want circulation, Mr. Baker. Well, let me alone and I'll get it for you. How? Let me run the Manhattan for three months with my policy and without your interference. You're talking to the owner of the Manhattan, Baker. And the biggest bottleneck in the whole organization. Now, wait. Let me change the policy. Just as a now, now, look. Let me just run one human incident a week. Just one. And you know exactly what people want? Well, what you want isn't selling. So let's go bank up your way, is that it? Oh, well, all right. Let's go bank up your way. It's much bigger. That's all for today. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm going to prove something. Hey. Hey, you out there. Anybody. Here, come in here. Please? You'll do. Can you read? Oh, yes, and I write, too. I just left one of my oh, stories. Oh, never mind there. about the writing. Everybody writes in New York, even people who can't read. Well, I happen to be from Columbus. Oh, very interesting. Come on, come on in. Who is this, Baker? Mr. Craven, meet Miss, um, here, what's your name? Sherwood. Bruce Sherwood. Meet Miss Sherwood. She can read from Columbus, Ohio. Meet Mr. Craven, the owner of all the Craven publications. Oh, how do you do? What can she do? Oh, I just told you. She can read. Now, Miss Sherwood, in your time, you have read the Manhattan. Isn't that true? Yes. When was the last time? Oh, uh, years ago. Years ago? Well, why did you stop reading? Well, uh, it, it just didn't interest me. Oh, that's no answer. Can't you explain why, or, or don't you have any opinion? Opinion? From Columbus, Ohio? We think in Columbus, Ohio, too, you know. As a matter of fact, we think your magazine's about 15 years behind the time. Oh, you do, do you? Go on. Yes, we do. People used to go for all that cheeky and shaky talk. They didn't know any better. But life's become a lot more real now. Oh, has it? Yes, yes, it has. We have radio now and movies, and we're right in the middle of a war. The Manhattan. <laughs> That's just a bore. Not only in Columbus, Ohio, but in 90% of the nation. Thank you, Miss Sherwood. Wait a minute. Where did you find this girl, Bob? Uh, outside. What was he doing there? I was trying to submit a manuscript. To which one of my magazines? The Manhattan. That's all I want to know. Mr. Baker, your Jimmy Pig plans the Manhattan, but she'd like a material publisher. Now, just one minute. If you'd like to know the truth, I came to the Manhattan in desperation. It was the last magazine I could think of. Well, what do you know? And now that I've met the brains of the organization, I'm sorry I came off. Hey, Miss Sherwood, wait. Yeah, wait. Oh, hello, Judy. Had any luck? Oh, terrible. I met an editor and the owner of a whole magazine thing. Why, Bruce, you're in. Yeah, they got me in to throw me out. What about you? Oh, I had the most exciting day, Bruce. I was in the outer waiting room of Wallace Production. Now you're getting someplace. Mm-hmm. And I met this man, Mr. Clark, a newspaper man on the globe. And what do you think? What? He interviewed me. Oh, he did. But did you get in to see Mr. Wallace here? <laughs> oh, oh, well, no, but don't you see, if I, if I wait until the interview comes out... Mr. Wallace will come to see me, and so will all the other producers. Uh, that was Mr. Clark's advice, I gather. Oh, and I told him all about you, and he seemed very interested. Mm. So interested in me, he can't wait to get you alone, huh? Oh, don't be silly. He's going to speak to you to the editor about you. Well, from here on, it's clear sailing, then. What have we got for dinner? Oh, spaghetti and meatballs. Oh, haven't we polished that off yet? We've been eating it for a week. Oh, Ruth, we ought to have something for dessert. Oh, no, let's skip the dessert here, please. Oh, oh, but we can't hear. There's a man coming for dinner. Who? What man? Frank Lippincott. Oh, no, who is Frank Lippincott? Oh, oh, didn't I tell you about that boy who manages the National Drug Store on 44th Street? Nope. Oh, Frank's a very nice boy. He didn't let me pay my lunch check. Hmm. Eileen, why don't you wander into the Ritz someday? I'm a rambling rat from Georgia Tech and a heck of an engineer. Listen. Hello. Anybody home? Go see who it is, Eileen. Hello. Just a minute. Yes, what do you want? Ah! Hey, what's the matter? Oh, it's a man. A man with pants. 
Uh, well, dear? Well, I, I mean short pants, short, no legs in them. Oh, oh. Hello, Gail. Hey, see here, you can't come in here like that. Oh, don't mind me. This is my practice costume. Yeah? Well, what are you practicing? Football. Got to keep training, you know. So you're the new girl, eh? Well, my name's Loomis. The wife and I live upstairs. Mm-hmm. How do you do, Mr. Loomis? Oh, leave out the mister. Just call me Rex. Rex? Yeah, that's what they call me at Georgia Tech. And it made All-American, only I was expelled. Say, uh, my wife and I got something we want to talk over with you, girl. Listen, uh, look, Mr. L- uh, Loomis, we happen to be I'll very... I'll get it. Yes? I am. Is Effie here? Effie? Why, no. Okay, I'll wait. Oh, but there's no Effie here. You said that. I said I'll wait. What's your name, Toots? Eileen. Warm, isn't it? Yeah, but you'll cool off. I'll look at you. Say, I'll what? handle oh, this. Oh, a guy. Say, what's the idea of crashing in on these girls? No, no, don't get yourself excited. I didn't know you was the landlady. It's just a mistake. Yeah, you bet it's a mistake. Now get moving. Very well. Good afternoon. You're the hairiest landlady I ever saw. Oh, you... oh thank you, Mr. Loomis. <laughs> Oh, that's all right. You know, he was looking for a girl named Effie. Is there an Effie in this place? Well, there used to be. She lived in this studio. She was uh, always some kind of a medium. Used to get psychic readings or something else. I hope she didn't leave any tambourines floating around. Come in! Oh, sure. Come in. Come in, everybody. Hello. Oh, come here, honey. Girls, uh, this is Helen, my wife. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? Hello. Well, have you asked the girls about it yet, dear? Oh, well, uh... No, not yet, baby. Well, there isn't much time, and we've got to get it settled. Yeah, yeah, well... Well, well, girls, it's like this. You know, Helen's mother is going to visit her, which <laughs> kind of straight out me right out into the alley. Haven't you got enough room? Well, we could make room, only, well, you see, um, well, Helen's mother doesn't know that we're married. And I'm afraid to tell her because the wreck isn't working now. Oh, but I start to work just as soon as the professional football season opens. So we thought that in the meantime, you two girls wouldn't mind putting me up in the kitchen. What? You mean sleep in our kitchen? Oh, he won't be in your way, really. But, but, but uh, what about a hotel? Oh, we haven't got a cent. Not a cent. Well, uh, maybe we could do it for one night. Hey, wait a minute. Uh, We're crowded enough as it is. Oh, thank you, girl. Oh, gee, that's well. I'll get a blanket and a pillow right away. I know, but... Uh, you think... girl. Uh... Eileen? Something tells me you weren't quite ready to leave Columbus. But, Ruth, now what did we say? We could have said no, couldn't we? Oh, that must be Frank. Let him in, will you, Ruth? I've got to change my dress. Uh, what's that guy's last name again? Lippincott. Lippincott. And remember, Ruth, he's a very nice boy, so please be careful. Well, who am I, Tugboat Annie? <laughs> Come in. Well, why, good evening. You must be Mr. Lippincott. Yeah. Guess you're Eileen's sister. That's right. I can see a family resemblance, all right. Oh, well, well, now, I, I'm very flattered. Of course, uh, you're sort of a different type. <laughs> yeah. I see what you mean. Uh, won't you sit down, Mr. Lippincott? Dear sister's just freshening up a bit. She'll be out in a minute. Oh, Ruth. Oh, yes, sister. What I'll... is it, dear? I'll be out in a minute. You see, I wasn't lying. <laughs> Eileen's been telling me about your drugstore. Oh, has she? I understand you have awfully good food. Oh, it's best and very reasonable. Reasonable isn't the word, as I understand it. What? Huh? Uh, you said reasonable. I mean, I said... Yes. Yeah. Don't you think you ought to start all over again? <laughs> oh, Frank. Oh, I'm so sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, that's all right. You're... Listen, I had my little talk. Oh, yes. Yes, you would have been proud of me, dear. Mm. I didn't make one slip, did I, Mr. Lippincott? What? Oh, um, may I take your hat, Frank? Oh, Oh, thanks. Oh, this is for you. Oh, Frank. You shouldn't have done that. It's some California red wine. I thought it'd go good with spaghetti. Mm Mm-hmm. It's a special we're running this week. So's our spaghetti. (laughs) Oh, well, Frank, I I guess you're just about finished. (laughs) Dinner's almost ready. Say, this is great, you know. I've always wanted to live in a studio like this. Well, I'd better set the table. Oh, do you mind if I help you? Why, Frank, how nice. The dishes are in here. Hey, this is great. Hello. Well, what do you want? I'm looking for a party named Sherwood, Eleanor Sherwood. You mean Eileen? Yeah, yeah, come to think of it, Eileen. And who should I say is calling? Uh, Clark, Chick Clark's your name. Oh, the newspaper man. Yeah, who are you? Oh, I'm her sister. Sister? She's a blonde good-looking kid, ain't she? Yes, she's a blonde, good-looking kid, ain't she? Oh, uh, Mr. Lippincott. Yeah? This is Mr. Clark. Oh, how you do? How are you? Mr. Lippincott's with the National Drug Store. Oh, yeah, I buy all my clothes there. <laughs> oh, you're quite a card, aren't you, Mr. Clark? This wine looks heavenly, Frank. 
Why, uh, hello, Mr. Clark. Hi, Eleanor. Say, I got great news for you, honey. We run the interview this week. Why, Chick? I, I mean, uh, Mr. Clark, why, that's just wonderful. <laughs> I sure am gorgeous. <laughs> you know, I've been turning you over in my mind all afternoon. Hey, what's in the bottle? Oh, it's a very fine California burgundy type wine. It's a special. Well, let's all have a drink, shall we? Do we need any ice? Oh, no, no, no. Just wine to be served at the temperature of the room. Well, then you better cook it for a couple of hours. <laughs> well, here's to us and to Burgundy, California. Oh, oh, what was that? It's all right, it's all right. It's just the subway. Miss huh? Sherwood, I... I'm afraid I... Oh, Frank, the wine is all over your pretty white suit. Oh, what a shame. My... Pants are wet. Oh, well, I'll get a kiss sock. Now, don't move, Frank. Oh, no, I'm not ready. Get up there. Uh, get your hands on me, you big slug. Ruth, what's that? Hey, something's the matter out there. Yeah, let me go. Come back here. Officer, officer, what's the trouble? Oh, it's the rest. That's what's happened. Tell this big clown I'm okay. Uh, yes, he's all right, officer. Uh, I hope. Well, I found him out in the alley in his shorts, carrying all these vegetables. I think he's some kind of a fiend. Oh, you're crazy. I'm going to live here. Live here? Live here? Oh, uh, in the kitchen. It's all right, officer. We know him. Oh, it's you two again, ain't it? I thought I warned you to move out of my feet. How dare you? Now, you wait a minute, officer. Yeah, see here, officer. And who do you think you are? I'll tell you who I am. Oh, stop it. Who cares who anybody is? What's the difference? Anybody walks in here. Everybody walks in here. Good the... evening. Ruth, Ruth, that. Why, he's a Cossack, isn't he? I am the doorman at the Russian Blini. Where do you want me to put her? Put who? The girl. She passed out. We carried her home. What girl? Bring her in, Igor. Hey, it's Effie. She used to live here. Put her down, Igor. Wait, here, wait a minute. Take that thing out of here. She doesn't live here anymore. We hey, hey. This is not the first time I take her home. <laughs> Come, Igor. Well, for a place with a bad location and no neon sign, we're doing a whale of a business. Now, who's that? Come in, come in, whoever you are. Hello. Oh. Did you think? Oh, good evening, Miss Sherwood. I read your story, and I'd like to discuss it. What did you say, Mr. Baker? I said I read your story. Yes. Yeah. That's what I thought you said, Mr. Baker. You, you... Oh. Oh, Ruth! Oh, 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 she's fainted. Oh, Ruth, oh, oh, drop her hand. Get a coat. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> You all right now? Oh, sure. Where are we going? Oh, someplace we can talk. We certainly couldn't do it back there. <laughs> Holy smoke, you live in a menagerie. Who are all those people? Well, they're just the Looks people like that happen... like a three-ring circus. How long have you lived in that place? Well, now, hey, let me see. Who was that guy about... with the wine all over his suit? Oh, that was a friend of my sister. And say, say, what's the idea of running out of my office today? Hey, come on, come on, answer me. But you don't seem to wait for an answer, Mr. Baker. Oh, oh don't I? Oh, I'm sorry. Look, I uh, hope you don't mind my rushing you away like that. Oh, not at all. As a matter of fact, we were just sitting down to dinner. When oh, all you're hungry. Sudden... Well, why didn't you say so? Hey, drive up. Corner of 3rd Avenue and 43rd. Yes. That's the best food you ever had in your life. Really? <laughs> they make a dish there that's fit for kings. Honestly, what? <laughs> Spaghetti and meatballs. Oh. Ah. Well, how'd you like it? Oh, it's a terrific. Can't eat this stuff too often, though. Makes you fat. I shouldn't wonder. What an earful you gave the boss. Oh, it was beautiful. <laughs> you know, for a girl from the backwoods, you're pretty shrewd. Where did you get all that sense? Well, Grandma, well what's the I... difference? You've got it. <laughs> you know, I've been having this fight with Craven on policy for years. And then you come along and take the case better than I did myself. Now, look. Look here. I need advice. What do you think I ought to do? Well, I'll tell you what's first... been going on with Craven ever since I took this job. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, you did read my stories, didn't you? Well, well, oh, yes. Yes, I saw. I told you I did. Now, uh, here, here, here. Where was I? Uh, you were saying something oh, about yeah, yeah, this yeah, yeah. guy. Now, uh, now, don't misunderstand me. Craven's a nice guy outside the office. You wouldn't know him. But the moment he gets down there, he's a bully. Why, talk, talk, talk all the time. Never hears what you have to say. <laughs> People like that drive you crazy, don't they? Yep. Oh, it kills me. I've tried to tell him that the first requisite of a modern magazine is to keep up with the times, with the uh, with the changing customs and speech, you know. Uh, here, say, aren't you getting tired of this place? Not the place so much. Me too. Let's go. No, no, I'm not going to quit. Why, anybody can walk out. Well, I, good night. I... Hey, wait, wait a minute. You're not going in yet. Sit down, sit down. Oh. You see, let me tell you, there's a, there's a thrill to this job. Yeah. If I can do what I want, but, uh, if I can uh, work on stories that are alive and, and help authors with yeah. talent to, to dig those stories out, eh? Yeah. Well, what do you think? I think it's just fine, Mr. Baker. And I also think it's after 3 o'clock in the morning, and if I ever come across the kind of author you're looking for, I'll let you know. Good night. Hey, hey, wait a second. What for? I can't even get a word in edgewise. 
you can't seem to... I can't seem to tell you or remind you that I'm an author, too, and that I've written some stories about Columbus, remember? Oh, and I read them. Are they good? They are? Well, why didn't you say so? Didn't I? No. Well, I'm telling you now. They're, uh, they're quite good. Oh, just quite good. Well, isn't that enough? You mean if you could publish them, you wouldn't? No, I wouldn't. Oh, the people come up all right, but the, the stories are flat. They don't get anywhere. Nothing happens. Ha-ha. That's because not enough happens to you. Oh, it doesn't, eh? That's what I said. Why, you can't lead a, a quiet, sheltered life the way you do. Quiet, it. sheltered? I, 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 Down in that tunnel, with Subway Blast bouncing me all over the bed, and Apopolis, our rat shooting landlord, and Eileen dragging home newspaper geniuses and drugstore Romeos and anything else that happens to, to be met up with during the day, and football players drifting in and out in their drawers, not to mention the rest of the world snooping through the windows over some kind of a public exhibition. Oh, oh shut up! Did you say sheltered? That's it, that's it. That's exactly the stuff. Well, why don't you go on and write it? Write what? Well, write about all. All those people start their story in Columbus and bring it to New York. Write about Rasputin and Eileen and, and the blast and the menagerie. See, it's wonderful. See, I see what you mean. <laughs> of course, I'm going to do it. When can I have it? I don't know, but I, I'm going to work right now. Oh, somebody do something. Better go home before you get killed. Good night. Good night. <laughs> oh, shut up. What do you think this is? The Grand Central Station? Is that you, Ruth? Yes, dear. Well, what's all that noise out there? Nothing, just me. Well, what time is it? Three thirty. Ruth, you were out with a man. Uh huh. And you've had no experience with men. Isn't it awful? Aren't you ashamed? And you were supposed to take care of me. Oh, Eileen, I love New York. I love everything about it. I like the air. I like the streets. Ruth, oh, I've got the police. They call the police. Oh, get in bed, Ruth. Get in bed. Oh, I wish I was back in Columbus. <laughs> Mr. DeMille presents the second act of My Sister Eileen, starring Rosalind Russell, Brian Ahern, and Janet Blair, with Hakeem Tamiroff in just a moment. Meantime, I have a problem. You have, Mr. Kennedy? Yes, I think being on the Lux Radio Theater is bad for me. You do? Why, I can't see anything wrong. But I can't. That's just the trouble, Sally. I keep seeing things. Seeing things? What kind of things? Oh, blouses and dresses that are all streaked and faded because they've been washed wrong. You know, I can't just walk up and say, Lady, if you'd wash that dress the Lux way, it wouldn't look like that. <laughs> Not if you want to stay healthy, you can. Well, Sally, what do you think I ought to do? Well, let's see. Maybe we could have some cards printed for you to hand out. We could say, New Improved Lux Place, Mildest, Safest Ever Made, Help Washables Last Longer. Yes, or don't let strong soaps and cake soap rubbing make your washables wear out before their time. Lux things last longer. Or just let your wash word be Lux. That's short and simple. So is Lux Chair. True. And if you could just get every woman to try one big box of new improved Lux Flakes, she'd see for herself how really thrifty it is. Maybe all I'd need would be one card that says new improved Lux Flakes come in the same familiar package. Ask your dealer for a thrifty big box tomorrow. Well, it's certainly an idea, Sally. I'll have to think it over. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> Act two of My Sister Eileen, starring Rosalind Russell as Ruth, Brian Ahern as Bob Baker, and Janet Blair as Eileen, with Akeem Demiroff as Mr. Apopolis. Now let's return to the Sherwood residence in Greenwich Village. No, let's not. They are still blasting that subway. We'll drop over instead to the Manhattan magazine office, where Ruth and Bob Baker are talking over the story Ruth has just finished. You really think it's all right? I think it's great. As far as I'm concerned, it's in the next issue. Craven's reading it now. Yes, sir. You know, you're quite a gal. <laughs> I like you very much. But he's had it for over an no, hour. No, 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 don't do worry. He's a slow reader. Oh, oh, I meant to tell you. I, uh, I don't like the title. I don't like it either. Well, we've got to get another one. Well, I have thought of some of it. Like what? Well, it seems to all hinge on Eileen. Yeah? I mean, she's in it so much that I thought of simply calling it... My sister Eileen? Yeah, that's it. Might be good. Might be perfect. In fact, it's... Oh, I'm sorry to intrude. Oh, intrude nothing. We're waiting for you, Craven. Well, well, what do you think of the story? Nice job. I didn't think Columbus had a dinner. Oh. But I tell you, Ruth, it's a magnificent job. Yes, you ought to be able to sell that somewhere. What? Somewhere? Well, why the dickens did the guy ask you to read it? Because you want to put it in the Manhattan. It's not the type of material for our policy. No? 
Well, you and I are going to have a showdown on policy right oh, now. Oh, no, please. Now, look, Frank, either that story goes in our next issue or I quit. Oh, no, no, that's absurd, Mr. Baker. Well, I guess I'll have to accept your resignation, Bob. Good. But not until that issue is off the press, unless you don't care about another job in the publishing business. And then the wreck mother-in-law arrived, and she found out Rick and Helen were married. Boy, was she mad. Has the wreck moved out of here? Oh, yes, he's gone back upstairs. Good. He doesn't care much for his mother-in-law, though. He says he's going to wait till Mother's Day and then stalk her. <laughs> nice sentiment. Well, what else happened today? You didn't get into anybody's inside waiting room, did you? No, I was at the food show. And what are they casting at the food show? Well, I saw a lot of people coming out with big bags of samples. So I thought we might as well have some, too. Look, I've got enough junk here for a week. Vita Colonel, Zippy, Ruffo, Nature's Broom. We're going to have breakfast all day long. Oh, but it's good for you, Ruth. It's lovely. I'd like to vary it with a little smoothies, like a steak. Oh, I forgot. Frank and I are friends again. I explained everything. Who'd you tell him Effie was, our fairy godmother? Gee, I had a swell lunch. I had tomato juice, a pimento and olive sandwich, a tuna surprise, a giant double malt with marble cake. Mm. That's right, dear. Keep your strength up. You're eating for both of us now. <laughs> well, it's a funny thing, Ruth. You don't seem to be losing any weight. How can I on potatoes, bread, and spaghetti? I'm starving all day long, and I keep getting fatter. I think I'll go on a diet of nature's broom. Delicious with strawberries and cream. What isn't? <laughs> you know, I wouldn't mind this place or sizzling our meals or anything if I only thought it was getting us someplace. Ruth, do you think we ought to go home for a little vacation? No, no, I don't. I think we ought to stay right here and do a little work. I want a little peace and quiet around here. I'm going to work till at least midnight. Greetings, the ladies, greetings. Oh, hello, Mr. Congratulate Potter. me, young oh. ladies. Today is the big day. Tonight's my one man's often. So I come to take my painting away and... The... Hey, hey, what kind of funny game got on here? Where's my painting? Well, didn't you take it? I didn't even notice it was gone. Oh, don't bother to give me a cock and bull story. What have you done with my painting? Why, well, it must have been stolen. Maybe it was the same gang that swiped the Mona Lisa. Now, if you didn't take it, who did? You know everybody who comes into this apartment. We don't even know half of them, including you. My dear lady, that painting was the last existing canvas of my blue-green period. What happened to the others? Termites? That's your last word? Termites. That's all I want to know. See if anyone noticed it was gone. <laughs> Ruth, I wonder who could have taken his painting. Oh, there must be an idiot sneak thief in the neighborhood. Oh, oh, dear. What's the matter, Ruth? You look terribly down. Yeah, it's bad enough to see they can't write your own name. It's on account of my stuff that Bob Baker's life is turned inside out. I'm a jinx besides. Oh, gee, Ruth, if you start feeling that way, who's going to hold me up? I'm not worried about you, Eileen. Not while there's a man alive. Oh, but after all, men are only an escape. Comes another escape. Hello, Sherwood resident. Miss Ruth Sherwood, for me? Um, who's calling? Oh, just a minute. Wait a second. Ruth, it's six hard paper. Hello? Yes? Yes, it's a she. Her, she. What? Oh, yes, Mr. Baines. Y yes, Mr. Baines? Oh, thank you, Mr. Baines. What is it? What's happening? Yes, Mr. Baines. Sand Street, Brooklyn. Sure, sure, I understand. Yeah, right away, Mr. Baines. I can't believe it. What is it? What do you want? I'm the editor. He's going to give me a chance to show what I can do. I got an assignment over in Brooklyn. Brooklyn? What happened over there? A merchant marine, a Portuguese ship with a load of young cadets. It just came in. I've got to do a human interest story. Where's my hat? Where's my bag? Oh, Bruce. This is the pardon from the governor. We're saved by the bell, Eileen. I guess Chick Park for some good after all. Yeah, I guess I owe Mr. Clark an apology. I always thought he was just trying to get around you. I still think so. Oh, Eileen, goodbye. Take care of everything. Goodbye now. Goodbye. Eileen, where is Brooklyn? Oh, you can't miss it. That's a help. Goodbye. Good luck. <laughs> Well, what's a good word? Well, how did you get in here? Oh, you're back to a locket, Buster. Oh, yes, I know. Gee, you scared me to death. <laughs> Take it easy, sugar. I just happened to see Ruth ducking down the subway, and I said, maybe Eleanor's alone. Oh, yes, well, she was on her way to Brooklyn. Oh, Chick, I want to thank you for getting Ruth that assignment. Ah, forget it, forget it. Now, uh, let's get our piece of cake now. Mm -hmm. Come here, sugar. Oh, mm -hmm. well, Chick, I've been waiting for that interview to be published. This week, sugar. Oh, thanks. Well, you better go now. Uh, you'll excuse me, won't you? Excuse you? Mm -hmm. After I went and fixed it to get you alone without that eagle-eyed sister of yours around? You mean, you mean, it, it wasn't the editor. It was you. 
you sent Ruth over to Brooklyn on a wild goose chase. Wild goose chase, nothing. It was one of the other boys' assignments. Oh, but how will I, how will the editor ever know that Ruth wrote it? Well, maybe he won't, but it's darn good experience for her. Oh, you ought to be ashamed. Oh, how am I ever going to tell her? Now, don't get fashy, girl. Oh, you get out of here. Ah, uh, now that's a silly attitude to take. Go away. Get away from me. Oh, stop playing oh, coy, please. sugar. Stop it, please. Come in. Oh, Mr. Baker. Now, Mr. Clark, will you please get out? I think I'll do it for the lady out, Mr. Clark. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. It's a little too hot for wrestling anyway. <laughs> You know, I look forward to the day when the Bronx Express runs right through this room. Oh, Mr. Baker. Oh, there, there. You're all right. I don't know what I'd have done without you. Now, you come and sit down. There. There you go. Everything's fine now, isn't it? Yes, thank you. You came to see Ruth, didn't you? Uh, oh, oh, Ruth, yes. There you go. Uh, where is she? Oh, that chick part center on a fake newspaper assignment to Brooklyn this Mm-hmm. Really, I'm having a bad day, isn't she? Well, <laughs> Ruth tells me you're an actress. Mm, yes, I, I want to be if I can ever get in the producer's office. Well, it shouldn't that to be too difficult. I'll see if I can arrange something. Oh, if you only could. Oh, but I would want to go to any trouble, Mr. Baker, after you've taken such an interest in Ruth. Let's say I've taken such an interest in all of that. Hmm? Oh, <laughs> Ruth is right, Mr. Baker. Why, you're the nicest person I've met in New York, too. <laughs> and you know, the things they say about New York aren't true at all. Why, everybody's been just lovely to me. Yeah. <laughs> I think I can understand that. Can you, Mr. Baker? Oh, sure. sure. Mm. Oh, well, I'm sorry what happened to you and your job. Ruth told me all about it. Uh, oh, yeah, yes, isn't it great? You know, I, uh, I am so lighthearted since I was a kid. You know what I had in mind when I came calling? A celebration. Uh, oh, you mean with Ruth? Uh, y- yes, but, uh, but why not with both the Sherwoods? A Sherwood sister on each of this well. <laughs> now, what would you say to a, a theater, a nightclub supper, eh? Oh, I love it, Mr. Baker. Fine, fine. Well, I'll pick you up at 8 o'clock. Goodbye, goodbye for now. Goodbye. Goodbye, Bob. Go away, go home, go home. Go, go home, do you hear? Eileen, Eileen. Oh, now, that's what... The police in. Uh, who are they? They're the Portuguese merchant marines. Ah, it's our doors to get it. <laughs> well, for heaven's sake, how do you do, gentlemen? Como estás, Mirina? Listen, Emily Post, how do you say get the chickens out of here in Portuguese? You mean you mean they don't speak any English at all? Not a word. Oh. Jean, Mr. Kenneth. <laughs> <laughs> what did you bring them here for? <laughs> bring them here? They've been on my tail ever since I left the Brooklyn docks. There were half a dozen more of them when we started, but they got lost in the subway. Yes, yeah. the Massimo Bellissima. Well, what do they want, anyway? What do you think they want? Oh, oh, we've got to get them out of here, Ruth. Yeah, but well, suppose you take a crack at it. All right. Um, go away. Go away, boys. Yes, Please. Yes, <laughs> oh, look, boys, go back to your boat. You know, boat, boat. <laughs> Admiral Sherwood, I presume. Oh, dear, what are we going to do? Well, I guess we're just going to stand around here grinning at each other until they learn to speak English. Vamos a Excelente. Look, they're tossing a coin. Ruth, what are they tossing for? i got a hunch it's not me. Hey, you, hey, you, mina carida prima americana. No, no, go away, go away. Yeah, it's you, all right, he won. Oh, earthquake, earthquake, run for your lives, run for your lives, earthquake. No, 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 no. What a performance. Bernhardt couldn't have done better. Well, stop grinning at me like that. Hey, you, turn off that radio. We don't want any music. La Ganga, La Ganga. Oh, they want to dance. La Ganga. No, no, La Ganga. I don't even run for it. Mr. Ganova, 
friends with Rosalind Russell, Brian Ahern, Janet Blair, and Artin Kamirov for Act Three of My Sister Eileen. Libby Collins has a report on the long and short of it. It's a short story on how to get longer wear from our clothes. You see, we're sort of silk and nylon and rayon these days. So the things we have, the slips and gowns and other undies, have to last longer. Sounds like a cue for Lux Flakes, Libby. Uh Uh-huh. Luxing under things and luxing them often does help them last longer. Besides making you sure they're always fresh and dainty. When you lock them out to everywhere, you just sort of, well, float away soil and perspiration. Easily and very, very gently. With no rubbing, no harmful alkali to weaken the fabric or fade the color. Don't let things get really soiled before you lock them. That's wasteful. Soil and perspiration left in fabrics are very hard on them. Make them wear out before their time. And then, too, it's wasteful because you have to use extra lux to get out the dirt. Lux them out to every wearing as you should. And I think you'll be surprised at how little lux you need to do the job. Just two tablespoons are enough to wash a blouse, a day's undies, and stockings. Yes, new improved Lux Flakes give you richer suds than ever. Longer lasting suds that do more work. To make a long story short, Lux things last longer. And Lux lasts longer, too. Lux cares thrifty care, a short way to longer wear. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. We'll get the latest news about our stars after the play. Now, here's the third act of my sister, Eileen. Starring Rosalind Russell, Brianna Hearn, and Janet Blair. With a keen premiere on. Ruth's sister, Eileen, is in the lockup. For anyone else, this would be a very serious moment. But Eileen is not worried. She's the bell of the police station. And the officers are feeding her ice cream. Oh, come on, Eileen. Open your mouth. Oh, boys, you're awfully sweet. Oh, oh, you're oh sure. Eileen, Eileen, dear. Why, Ruth, hello. What are they doing to you, darling? Feeding me ice cream. Isn't that nice of the boys? Oh, oh no. Oh, Eileen, oh, you're sure you're all right? Oh, right. Well, well, of course I'm all right. Oh, Mr. Baker. Oh, Bob, it was terribly nice of you to oh, come. Oh, no, that's all right. I came as fast as I could, Eileen. Well, I, I didn't even know you knew Eileen. Oh, well, he yes. certainly does. We had a delightful talk this afternoon, didn't we? Oh. Look, Ruth, I, I don't want you to worry, but I'm afraid the news is not too good. I did some phoning about this, and it seems that a peculiar ramification. What kind of ramification? Well, it seems that Washington wants Eileen has. Washington, D.C.? Yeah, yeah, something about foreign relations, the, uh, the Portuguese merchant moon. Oh, mm-hmm. my God, what a dad ever hears about this. We've got to get a lawyer. Oh, no, 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 it's only a technicality. I'm sure they'll honor in a few hours, but, uh, I'm afraid Eileen has to spend the night in jail. The night? Oh, boy! Oh, get some more ice cream, Al. Come on, Al. Darling, how perfectly horrible for you. Well, now, Ruth, if I have to, I have to, that's all. Come on, boys, oh, knock oh, me oh, up. Oh, oh, oh. oh Miss Trevor, you finally returned to the scene of your crime. Now, don't you start a populist. I'm in no mood to swap subtleties with you. Not so high and hearty, my dear lady, please. Arrest. Jail. <laughs> I only hope your sister had sense enough to give the wrong address. Yeah, imagine what bad publicity could do for this rat hole. <laughs> now, listen. Uh, you see, I don't hold grudges. So if you got some money and if you want to stay on here, I, uh, I'm ready to talk business. Oh, you are, eh? Yeah. All right, how about returning our month's rent? We're still dissatisfied. What? What are you talking about? Whoever said such a thing? I was one of the witnesses and I don't remember. Okay, witness, blow. Blow? Me? In my own building? Yeah, blow. In your own building? Very well, I will blow. But five o'clock tomorrow, when your current lease expires, I'm blowing back again. Just a minute. Hello, darling. What? Why, Dad! <laughs> oh, Dad! I'm here too, you know. Grandma! <laughs> How are you, Ruth? Well, why didn't you let us know you were coming? What are you doing here, anyway? Well, your father's been worrying like a fool. Worried? Worried about what, Dad? Where's Eileen, Ruth? Eileen? Oh, well, she's uh, she's out for the day already. Eileen, at ten o'clock in the morning. Doing what? Uh, well, well, nothing yet. I mean, she's she. Oh, gee, Dad, you look great. Uh, why is it you never wrote about anything definite? <laughs> Well, you see, darling, it takes time. I mean, I send in a lot of material, one story in particular. I feel sure that... well, How are you, Ruth? Uh, Rack, Rack, couldn't you come back a little later? Oh, there ain't going to be no later. Helen and I are just leaving on our honeymoon. Honeymoon? Hello, Ruth. Mother said her daughter couldn't get married without her being present, so we had to get married all over again. Yeah, well, so long, baby. We'll be seeing you. Yeah, goodbye, Rex. Oh, Ruth, I want to thank you for all you've done. Oh, that's all right. Goodbye. 
Well, it isn't every girl that would let my husband come and live with him. What's that? What? Uh, goodbye, uh, Ellen. Bye. Uh, goodbye. Uh, and listen, tell Eileen we're sorry she wasn't here. Yes, I will. I will. Uh, say, when are they letting her out of jail? In jail? Uh, oh, get out of here, will you, please? Oh, uh, Ruth. Uh, what? Uh, uh, Ruth, is Eileen in jail? Well, it's a long story. How long has she been in? Well, you see, there were ten Portuguese sailors. What? I mean... Uh, yeah. Eileen, come here. Darling, is everything all right? Oh, it's fine. Daddy, you just die when you hear where I've been. Yes, I'm sure he will. I've already heard. Dad, it, it isn't as bad as it sounds. Don't bother, Ruth. You girls are coming home with me tonight. Home? Uh, I can explain the whole thing if you... You can make your explanations on the way back to Columbus. <laughs> New pack room? Just about. Oh, horrible, that's what it is. Just horrible. And after meeting the nicest person we met in our lives, the first person who really seemed to care what happened to my career. You mean Mr. Baker? Yes, Bob Baker. Now, how am I going to call him up and say, Father's bumming me off home? Well, it really doesn't make any difference, Eileen. We didn't get to know him too well. What? Said... Said we got to go home. So it doesn't matter now. What? Ruth. I never dream. You like him, too. Well, strange as it may seem, why, I never had any idea. And me, me that's had no experience with men. See, that's bad, isn't it? That's ridiculous. I'm just a goof. Come on, Eileen, finish packing. Dad said he'd be back here any minute. Who is it? Morning. Oh, hello, Bob. Oh, Gilbert. Packing? Well, what does this mean? We're going home. Yes, Father came. He wants us to go back for a little while. Yes, wait a minute, wait a minute. When are you coming back? I don't think we'll ever be back. We're going home because we're a couple of flat, broke failures. Oh, Ruth. As a matter of fact, if Dad hadn't shown up, I guess we'd have had to thumb our way back to Columbus. Oh, 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 now that can't be true. Oh, no? I got three extra pounds to prove it from eating potatoes and spaghetti. We can't even buy that much now. Well, you can buy a lot of spaghetti for 250 bucks. Here, this check seems to be yours. Has your name on it. Here. $250! It's much too early in life to begin accepting charity, Mr. Baker. We won't take it. Thank you very much. Oh, I get it. You're going to read page 15 of this new issue of the Manhattan, and you're going to hold us up, eh? I suppose you're going to sue us for almost a million dollars. Page 15? Well, what's on it? Look. My sister Eileen by Ruth Sherwood. My sister Eileen... Why, that's me! Ruth, that's your story! Well, how did it happen? How do you think it happened? <laughs> and if you want to know, several people have already phoned me to say that they consider this is the best human interest story of the year. Oh, no! Oh, yes! Oh, me too, young ladies, but I couldn't help but over here. Congratulations! All right, Apopolis, yes. thank you. And you can have your apartment today. Oh, no, no, I will not hear of your leaving. Why? I'm sure we, we can reach an understanding. Hmm, I'm sure you think so now, Mr. Apopolis. Yes. But in the future, we certainly won't be living in a place where there are explosions under the bed. Oh, but wait, wait. The blasting is over. I just got a letter from the city. What? It's in black and white. Please note, blasting will terminate on August the 1st, today. And you'll fix this place up? Now, wait a minute. New furniture, new paint, A1 stoves and plumbing. Venetian blinds. Venetian blinds? Yes. Oh, Ruth, I think we ought to do it. Well, certainly. Yes, but how do we know he's going to do what he says? It's in the leaf, yes. There, you see. Oh, please, Ruth. He can't back out, and we've got him just where we want Absolutely. him. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm trapped. <laughs> well, uh, all right. I'll sign it. Congratulations, young lady. You've made a very wise decision. Aren't you ready yet, girls? The bus leaves in 40 minutes. Dad, we're not going. What? What happened? Ruth told the story. Look, we're famous, both of us. I don't believe it. Congratulations, Mr. Sherwood. You have a pair of brilliant daughters. I'm proud to have them as tenants for the next six months. Six months? Yes, it's all settled, Dad. We've just signed the lease. Yes, thank you. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> what, what was that? My goodness. What is it? A populace. I thought the blasting is over now. They're starting to drill. <gasps> Goodbye. Oh, you... You cheat! Now I'm convinced. You girls are coming right back to Columbus. Oh, no, no, no. Not Ruth Sherwood. What's that? I, I didn't tell you, Ruth, but since this morning, Mr. Craven has decided that there is room in his publication for some human material. And I have a contract here for all the future Eileen stories you'll ever write. Oh, Ruth! And believe me, the Eileen stories will go on forever. Why, I've just got loads of material. I'll guarantee that. Now, see here. Oh, what's happening here? Uh, look, I've made up my oh, mind. no, 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 sir. You can't take Ruth back to Columbus now. Why don't you see? She and I have a lot of work to do together. It may take years. Maybe even a lifetime to finish. I wonder if you understand, Mr. Taylor. 
A lifetime? It's getting pretty clear to me. You mean, uh, you want to, uh, you and Ruth? Yes, sir. Oh. Well, in any case, uh, certainly Eileen is coming home. Oh, no, 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 Dad, she isn't. If I stay, Eileen stays too. Mr. Baker knows a lot of people in the theatrical world. Well, of course I do. Well, we ought to celebrate. Will you all be my guests for dinner? Now you're talking, young man. But no spaghetti. <laughs> Positively not. Come on. Hold on, Mother. Not, not oh, so Walter, fast. be still. Let's go. Huh? Oh! There's something coming up through the floor. Yes, Stand back. It's a drill. They're drilling through the floor. Oh, look, it's a man. Oh, excuse me, ladies. Hey, Mo, I think we made the wrong turn. <laughs> Our stars will be back for a curtain call in just a moment. We're a little late for Mother's Day, or even for Father's Day, but good news about babies is welcome any day in the year. You know those uh, underpinnings that baby wears? Well, they used to be triangular, but I understand the modern generation is getting more of a square deal. Here's a note about them I read in the paper the other day. To keep up with the rising birth rate, the WPB has allowed their manufacture to increase, so that by the year's end, we'll be producing 100 million of them. So it looks as though an urgent clothing problem for young America is on the way to being solved, or partly solved. I say partly because baby must not only have these important bits of wearing apparel, but mother or nurse must see to it that they're properly cared for, so they're comfortable for baby to wear. And that's where new improved Lux Flakes come into the picture. Wise mothers use this super safe new Lux for all of baby's washable. Then they run no risk of having the harmful alkali from strong soap remain in the fabric to irritate baby's tender skin. When you wash them the gentle Lux way, little sweaters and woolies will come out soft and fluffy. They won't shrink out of shape or fade or get harsh and scratchy. New improved Lux is the gentlest kind of washing care for everything your baby wears. And its richer, longer-lasting suds do more work than ever, so it's very thrifty care, too. It comes in the same familiar blue box. New improved Lux Flakes. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our star. If we all feel a little merrier than we did an hour ago, now is the time to give credit to Rosalind Russell, Brian Ahern, Janet Blair, and Akeem Tamirov. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. It's a pleasure to be here again. In fact, C.P., this is Rosalind's first appearance here since she became the mother of the handsomest baby in Hollywood. Is that uh, positively? Oh, I don't think he really is, Akeem. Now, Ros, you're just being modest. Okay, you talked me into it. What's his name, Rosalind? His name is Carl Lance. Uh, and I guess he's listening in tonight. Of course. Maybe he's an even critic. Oh, well, eight weeks old, he's a little young for that, Akim. And if, you, if you want any advice on raising children, Rosalind, just ask me. Mm, that sounds like authority talking. Mm, the authority of four children and seven grandchildren, Janet. I know the business from the 2 a.m. bottle to the stage when they attack the dining room table with a hatchet. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Brian, uh, the last time mm. you were here, you were you were studying to become a flying instructor. How's it coming along? Oh, well, CB, I hope to start right away. Well, good luck, Brian. Thank you, Janet. No, CB, what about next week's play? Closes the season for you, doesn't it? Yes, and it closes on a note of triumph, because next Monday night play is the Warner Brothers screen success, Air Force, and our stars will be George Raft and Harry Carey. Air Force is the story of a lady named Mary Ann, who had a whole crew of men in love with her. A crew which followed her from America to Hawaii, to Wake Island, to Manila, and to Australia. Mary Ann is a flying fortress, and we'll tell you her, her wonderful story next Monday night. It could be a very thrilling radio drama, Mr. DeMille. Good night. 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 Hope you've enjoyed the evening as much as I have. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today we, we not only celebrate our independence, but in every corner of the world, our boys are fighting for it. Fighting for the freedom that was won so hard and has been kept so long. So I give you an Independence Day toast to our fighting men and the flag they fight for. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theatre presents George Raft and Harry Carey in Air Force. The success will be the mill saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> Hello.
Rosalind Rodwell appeared through the courtesy of Columbia Pictures, and she is soon to be seen in the Columbia production, 10% Woman. Janet Blair also was heard tonight through the courtesy of Columbia Pictures, and will next appear on the screen co-starring with Rita Hayworth in Heart of a City. Brian Ahern's next picture is the Columbia production, Attack by Night. Akeem Tamirov will be seen in Paramount's For Whom the Bell Tolls. Here's a radio announcement of great interest. Fred Brady, MGM's hilarious new comedy find, starts a brand new comedy show beginning Thursday evening over another network. See your daily newspaper for the time and station. I know you'll be glad I called your attention to this new Fred Brady show starting Thursday evening and continuing every Thursday thereafter. Heard in tonight's play were Roland Drew as Rex, Ben Alexander as Frank, Wally Mayer as Chick, Jeff Donnell as Helen, Leo Cleary as Craven, Cliff Clark as Top, and Ken Christie, Arthur Q. Bryan, Eddie Marr, Norman Fields, Verna Felton, Fred Mackay, Louise Arthur, and Vicki Lang. Our music was directed by Louis Silver. This is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in next Monday night to hear George Raft and Harry Carey in Air Force. Mothers, everyone knows it's harder to get vitamin-rich foods in these days of food shortages. But have you thought about giving your family BIMS? BIMS are scientifically designed to help make meals complete. They give you all the vitamins government experts say are essential, balanced in the formula,